Okay, let's take a look at the, the dynamic range. As I showed in a prior video, the dynamic range of the XT2 versus the XT1. Now let's take a look at the XT2 versus the Nikon D500. Now it is a known fact that the Nikon D500 is ever so slightly prone, well, a little bit more than ever so slightly prone to uh, clipping specular highlights. What we have here below are the clipping points at the specular or the highlights on the uh, Nikon D500. So we have a, a 2.7 EV clipping point. We have exactly a half a stop better buffer room on uh, totally washing out our uh, specular highlights on uh, the Ni uh, excuse me, the Fuji X-T2 over that of the uh, Nikon D500. Total uh, dynamic range value that we have, not really that much. 6.8 versus 7.1 EV. More important, everybody's talking about the absolute dynamic range of a camera, which of course is important, but more useful and more utilitarian is knowing what your specular clipping points are. And they, most people that actually own the D500, that's one of the first things they notice that while it is an exquisite camera, it is quicker to quip to clip the specular highlights than uh, its Nikon D750 or D810 cousins are. Um, the clipping point uh, range that we have uh, is a 6 EV on the Fuji X-T2 and 6.3 EV on uh, the Nikon D500. Uh, we do have a better uh, uh, low light um, performance as far as gain on uh, the Nikon D500 over that of the X-T2. Now check the prior video where I do comparison between just the X-T2 and the X-T1. So now let's get that out of the way, the Nikon D500. And by the way, these tests were done with extreme precision and extreme caution to make them completely accurate and keeping all variables equal and um, using the best light meter that money can buy as well as the software to make uh, correct exposure, three stop over, three stop under, and so these are uh, valid real world outputs of the Fuji X-T2 versus uh, these Nikon cameras. Now below we're looking at the Nikon D810 versus the Fuji X-T2. Obviously we have a great deal more. It's a full frame sensor on the Nikon D810. We have 7.7 .7 EV dynamic range, but, but once again we have a better specular clipping uh, point uh, range on the Fuji X-T2 over even that of the uh, full frame 36 megapixel uh, Nikon D810. We have a clipping point range rather significant in totality of 6.7 EV, larger photo sites, larger sensor, 6.7 EV total on the Nikon D810 versus 6 EV on the Fuji X-T2. That's not bad. I mean, it's a little bit over half a stop, but exactly what is to be expected. What we do have, how, have however, is over a full stop on uh, the clipping point of uh, where our shadows uh, get completely lost. And this is an average of a correct exposure, three stops over, three stops under, on all of these cameras. All variables are kept the same. So that is the comparison of the Fuji X-T2 versus the Nikon D500 and versus the Nikon D810, which is a full frame sensor at 36 megapixels. The Nikon D500 is also a crop sensor camera at 20 megapixels, and uh, it does clip the speculars rather easily. I mean, I own two Nikon D500s. I mean, that's one of the first things that I reported on is that you have to be... Uh, more guarded in uh, protecting your speculars and uh, this is something that the X-T2 beats the D810 on, it beats the Nikon D500 on, and it beats the Fuji X-T1 on. And uh, if I'm going to have leeway anywhere, that is definitely the, the leeway that I want. I am certainly less concerned about losing uh, total shadows. We're gonna, right now we're looking at a full frame sensor versus the the uh, Fuji X-T2, so this is not a full compare, not a not a fair comparison, but uh, have the fact that I do have uh, better specular highlight clipping uh, leeway or padding on the X-T2, even over that of the full frame Nikon D810, is uh, very good news. And I've noticed that in shooting today too. I noticed that uh, clipping the speculars was almost hard to do relative to normal shooting circumstances with my other Nikons 
or even that over the Fuji X-T1. So that is very good news. Okay, thank you for watching so much and check out the other video where I do a comparison on the dynamic range and the clipping points between the Fuji X-T2 versus the X-T1. Okay.